everybody welcome back today we're going to be going over a fun little tool the wand tool this kind of, yeah I know we're still on selecting objects well there's reasons why that there's so many different ways to select objects that is needed when you're working on complex designs with huge number of objects you will need multiple ways of manipulating these objects and moving them around adjusting them but first and foremost you need to be able to get the objects that you need to do any kind of a real adjusting so no f further ado let's talk to the next object which is the so magic wand tool you can easily get into that by pressing the Y key now as you see I have this large grid here of boxes some of them are various colors and shapes um, this is the standard setting for the wand tool again you can get to this dialog box by double clicking the wand tool there you go fairly easy fairly simple um, so yeah anyways you this is the way you can control the amount of selection based off of variances and things of that nature like for example color I am gonna when I hit say this top square here it's gonna select a certain number up to the 20 percent or in so as you see it selected these three objects up here but as it got beyond what would it considered this transition it did not it stopped the selection as you noticed in the second line here it didn't select anything we'll go over that in a minute now on the third line here the orange as you see it only selected the first one why because it's the closest to what was specified now again we're going to ignore the rest of these down here because all these boxes themselves are white and what I probably should have done was this and there. Now we don't have to worry about those not being selected when I don't want them selected. So, now again, back with the wand tool. Excuse me, if I select, say, this darker gray, again, you see how it's only selected up to a certain point. Now this can all be controlled right here with this slider. Say I want 100% of that. It's going to pick pretty much everything because that's what it understands. Now I can again select, bring this really far down, and when I select, it's going to be because it's so low. It's there's nothing that similar to it that it will only select that one object. So this is he, this here is a way of controlling that. Now we're not only select, able to just select the fill color but if we wanted to we can also select stroke color. So and let's change this back to its default which is 20. So now that I have this set to the stroke color it's going to pick everything with that stroke color as well as the gray. So what we should see, I'm going to pick on the center one here again, we should see this first row, some of these coming down this way selected. So let's do that. So, hmm. Apparently I'm a liar. Well, oh no I'm not, that's right. Um, it selected this because of the based off of this. Now if I uncheck this and we only work with the stroke color say I select in here which I know is black it's going to select a whole lot more of these objects now I can take that and change that stroke if I wanted to for example which I don't want to do that right now so we'll undo that now we'll move on to the next one here which is stroke weight so now we have it on stroke weight what it's going to do is look for that now as you see the number is different it's a point size because your strokes are weight your stroke weight is based off of points instead of color percentages 
or so all right so we want pick the thickest white um, the stroke so this here yeah it picked up the heavier weights up to five points different so let's change that to something a little smaller now go ahead and we'll select the top one again as you see now that I've changed the number we're having fewer selections alright let's we're not going to, I don't have anything, I didn't even think of that, opacity yeah, but you can even do it by opacity, say I had something that was 50 percent I needed to find things within that range of transparency we've got the opacity so it's a very powerful tool, a very way, various ways of selecting um, ob many objects at one time it makes things move faster, smoother, along with making your life easier. Believe me, I've tried selecting individual objects that I needed to be removed or shifted. It can be a lot of work. So, all right. Now, with that, I only planned on this part. So, that's it for this half. I think the next half we will go over the lasso tool. So, or uh, you know, I'll just do that now. So now I'm going to move on to lasso tool. Should be an interesting tool since I don't really use it very often. But as you can see, it draws a line around objects. And if you look at it, it's utilizing as if it was the um, direct select. So if you look at it, some points aren't selected as others are, as you can see. So the straightforward tool, pretty simple. Again, I've used this in the past. It can be very powerful when not used correctly. And it saved me. It has saved me some time when I've worked and I needed to manipulate individual pieces rather than using the straight direct tool. Um, all right. So that's the next session. We will go over the pen tool. That's going to be a lot longer of a video. Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you all liked it. Please, if you want to see more videos, go ahead and subscribe. If you want to leave a comment, please do so. Thanks again for watching.